Look to somebody and say, don't panic. Don't panic. Under, pressure. Under pressure. Now, how many had some trouble with panic this week? <laughs> oh, come on, somebody. Raise your hand. If you had some trouble with panic, ain't no shame in this now. That's how you overcome. Amen? And I, I, I went and looked at the word panic, and, and it's amazing to me how people panic under pressure. We saw the snowstorm that came through last day, uh, yesterday through Washington and Baltimore, and they had cameras in the grocery store, and the shelves were empty. It was a grim reminder of 1978 when I first came to Boston. I came to Boston was in 77 of that summer going into 78 of that winter, and it was in February, and it, it, it was snow so hard, I said to Mary, y'all get snow like this all the time? Because I was about ready to go back to Raleigh. I'm trying to tell you right now, it snowed, and God bless my mother-in-law, I was staying with her, and we were we was in the house for almost a whole week. Snow drifts all up to the front of the house, where you couldn't get out. I heard folks had to turn on hot water in the bathtub, take the shovel of snow in the front uh, doorway, and dump it in the bathtub just to get out the front door. Now, many who was around know what I'm talking about. People were stuck on the expressway as far as 10 miles out and couldn't get in the city. I know what I'm talking about. I ain't, this was a figment of my imagination. It happened for those who were here. February 6, 1978. Think about that on this day. Well, people panicked and ran to the grocery store. But it brought people together for a reason, but sometimes people were brought together for the wrong reason. Come on, somebody. Neighbors went back into the old days where they went by and said, can I borrow a cup of sugar or a cup of flour? Come on, somebody. So people panicked. Now, people panic for all kinds of reasons today. When they health fail them, they panic. Come on, somebody. You don't want to hear the doctor tell you you got cancer. Because for a moment, you, you paralyze, and, and you can't think through with it. And then when it dawned on you, this man told me, I'm going to die, or I got cancer, then you panic for a moment. So don't tell me panic won't attack. Panic attacks. Panic over Wall Street and their money. Now, I know some of y'all panic over your money now. But don't y'all look at me like that. I know what I'm talking about. I'm taking it slow with you this morning so you'll understand what panic is all about. When you didn't make plans or you got plans to pay this bill and an emergency come up and you can barely meet your bills and don't lose some money, you would tear the whole house up. You accuse everybody in the house who got your money. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, we find that when H1N1 showed up, that was a pandemic globally. People say, cough in your elbow. Don't be coughing in your hand and shaking your hand with me. I ain't riding the train or trolley no more. Because the very president got a call putting their hand where my hand got to go. People say, I ain't pushing the elevator no more. I ain't riding the elevator no more because they have a panic attack for riding the elevator. I know people that won't ride an elevator unless it's somebody is on it. You think I'm making this up. They'll walk up six, seven flights of steps if nobody get on the elevator with them. Fear will cause panic. Look to somebody that said, don't panic. Under pressure. Some people panic in the business world when there's a deadline. Or they miss the deadline. They grab their head and they start hollering and screaming, just like when people lose their money. You lose a $100 bill, you lose your rent. And see if you ever heard a panic attack. You'll see what I'm saying in a minute. There are people who, uh, when, when things are out of order, are miss misordered because they place an order and they got a deadline to meet, they will almost lose their mind. Where in the customers or where in the provider, where's my package? I paid you UPS 
I said, I paid you. You got a postal service to deliver my package. And it's not there. A panic attack. Negative trends can cause panic attack. When folks ain't got the latest gadget, they almost lose their mind. You ever seen folks when their, their cell phone go off or they don't have no power? Like they didn't lost their mind. Like the world revolved around that little phone. There are people like that, you know. Benjamin Franklin said some terrible things happened to me in my lifetime, a few in which I, they actually happened. There's only a few things that happened that was real. You and I have to keep our bearing about us. We are to never let someone see us sweat. Come on, somebody. We are to say as calm and as cool as a cucumber. Come on, somebody. Look at somebody and say, don't panic. Don't panic. Stay, calm. Stay calm. Stay cool. Stay, cool. Stay, collective. Stay collective as a cucumber. As a cucumber. Now, you know, a cucumber just lay there and look cool until you, <laughs> until you peel it, amen, and mix it with the salad, amen? Oh, y'all don't hear me. I, you hear me humming, but you don't want to be coming. Come on, somebody. It's important to understand here in Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 3, all right, up to verse uh, 13. He says here, And I entreat thee also, true fellow, yoke fellows, help those women which labor with me in the gospel. With Clement also and with others, my fellow laborers, whose name are not in the book of life. Whose names are in the book of life? I'm sorry. He says in verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say what? He says here in verse 5, Let your moderation, let your gentleness be known unto all men that the Lord is at hand. Can't you look around and see that the Lord is at hand? Yeah. Be careful. The word be careful here means be anxious for nothing. Don't panic when things are not going right. Paul is saying to the church, be anxious for nothing. Be careful for nothing. But in everything that you're going through, make sure your prayer and supplication with thanksgiving and your request be made known unto God. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So whatever you're going through, don't panic. Just put it in God's hand. And you got to catch yourself before you panic. Because when you panic, amen, you lose it. And when you lose it, you don't think right. You don't behave right. You don't act right. You know, folks, when they get mad, they can cuss you out. Because ain't nobody in here cuss, so I ain't got to worry about that. I hope you don't cuss anyway. He said in verse 7, and the peace of God, the peace of God, everybody say the peace of God, peace of God. which passes all understanding, all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I think Isaiah said to the people of God, when you're going through your panic attack, and you don't worry about how the enemy is going to attack. If you keep your mind stayed on him, he said, I'll keep you in perfect peace. you got to have your mind always on the Lord. I don't care what you're dealing with, that your whole desire and your whole meaning of life be settled upon Christ. Because when you take your mind off of him, the enemy will attack. And let me tell you something. He don't need no reason to attack you. He'll attack you without provocation. He says in verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, anything that leave something somebody do for you, if there be any praise, Think on these things. That's where your mind should be, thinking on those things. And not thinking about, oh, how is this going to turn out? Or how is that going to turn out? Those things which you have heard and learned and received and heard 